Hey guys, we're back with another video in the AI 101 series. And this time we're focusing on natural language processing, which is a subfield of artificial intelligence that focuses on developing AI that can understand and interpret language. Ideally, these algorithms would be able to use and interpret language as well as us humans can, but as you'll see in this video, we're not necessarily there yet. If you haven't seen the other AI 101 videos, I definitely recommend checking them out. I'll add a link to the playlist at the end of this video, and then I'll also include a link to the AI 101 How Does AI Work video up here. Okay, let's get started. Language is obviously complicated for humans, let alone algorithms. It's easier for us to pick up new languages when we're young, and we get progressively worse at it as we get older. Additionally, while languages have rules, those rules are often broken in ways that convey new meanings or new interpretations of older terms. As language is complicated, it can be difficult to teach a algorithm to understand, interpret, and manipulate language correctly. It's even harder to do so in a way that is convincing to a human. One of the earliest proposed benchmarks for how convincing a model is is the Turing test, which probes the ability of an algorithm to display a level of intelligence that is indistinguishable from that of a human. While the Turing test is more of a theory than a quantitative benchmark, and while it has been criticized as much as it's been praised, the philosophical question of whether an algorithm could talk or reason was compelling enough to drive research into algorithms and language. Natural language processing research can be traced back to the 1950s. Up until the 1980s, these algorithms were primarily rule-based and wouldn't fit into what we currently consider to be artificial intelligence. Instead of relying on machine learning, they relied on complex preset written rules that were developed by humans. You can think of them as if-then statements. If someone said one thing, it prompted a preset response. This isn't to say that these algorithms were bad or didn't sound human. In fact, the complexity of these preset rules allowed for some surprisingly realistic interactions between machines and humans. This realism improved with the introduction of machine learning in the late 1980s. Instead of relying on preset rules, these algorithms relied on statistical correlations in large sets of text, often called corpa. Corpa were annotated with labels, such as parts of speech, so that supervised learning could be used to train algorithms. Corpa were annotated with labels, such as parts of speech, so that supervised learning could be used to generate coherent sentences. The algorithm would assign probabilities to different sequences of words, and the sequences with the highest probabilities would be generated as sentences. More recently, deep learning has been used in natural language processing to create better models. We've also seen the rise of unsupervised learning, or learning on unlabeled data, and semi-supervised learning, or learning on a mix of labeled and unlabeled data in natural language processing. These last two are actually much harder to use to develop good models, because the labels that are typically assigned to the parts of the text in the corpa help models learn things like syntax, semantics, and sentence structure. However, they can result in some pretty impressive models. Now, this can be kind of hard to understand just by my rambling, so let's look at an example. A model that we've talked about in the past on this channel is GPT-2. GPT-2 is a language model developed by OpenAI that can generate paragraphs of text. And I'm not going to get too far into the details of GPT-2 and why it's a particularly interesting model. If you're interested in that, you can check out my video on dual-use algorithms, or you can check out a bunch of references in the description box. In short, it's an unsupervised learning-based model, so it does not use labeled data, but still is able to generate extremely convincing paragraphs of text on a variety of different topics. Now, while you could go to GitHub and download the model yourself, Max Wolf, who's a developer at BuzzFeed who also does a lot of open source machine learning projects on the side, has actually created a website where you can type in different prompts and see what GPT-2 writes based on that prompt. As you can see here, I'm typing in different prompts to see what the model generates. Not all of the results are great. You'll see that there are some topics that result in a lot of repetitive phrasing, which probably means that there isn't much of that topic in the training data but some of them are pretty cohesive. I'll include the link down here and in the description box, so try it out, see what you get, and let me know what you think in the comments. 
And that's all I've got for you today. If you like this video, you can let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also support me on Patreon. Thank you so much to all of my current patrons. I will likely be posting some behind the scenes footage from YouTube EduCon, which is next week on Patreon. So if you're interested in checking that out, then become a patron. Otherwise, you can find me on the various social medias and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. This realism improved with the introduction of, see, words are hard in the morning for me, let alone algorithms. If you haven't seen the other AI 101 videos, I definitely remember words. In fact, the, in fact, the complexity of the rules allowed the, if you haven't seen the other AI 101 videos, I definitely remember was enough to partially at least push the field towards, no, you can think of them as if-then statements. If someone said, 